Hey guys, I'm Andre, a certified translator and a real estate concierge dealing in Minsk and across Belarus. My major official business is immigration matters, immigration to Belarus, no matter how funny it may be to some people. I would like to specifically highlight, I'm grateful to the guys who are my patrons on Patreon, who are members of the YouTube channel. Although now the money from some of the Google services has stopped coming uh, because of some bank blockage or something, I'll have to visit my bank tomorrow to find out. That's BSB, by the way. It's not receiving Google payments. So I'm kind of, mm, kind of short-funded a little bit, but not critical. As always, if you have five or ten dollars to keep the show going, that's just absolutely lovely because the show must go on. Let's see what's happened in the last three weeks. Since I'm an ex-tour guide, occasionally doing tours once in a while, I would like to cover travel issues first. There are two major travel things to talk about. The first thing is there aren't many layovers you can take to fly into Belarus, so flying over via Georgia, Kazakhstan or Turkey is your best chance to fly in here. And if you're eligible for visa-free travel, uh, 75 plus countries, the link down below, uh, you may do just that. Otherwise, the only credible overland option is flying to Vilnius, mostly having a visa and then taking a bus to cross into Belarus. Land crossing sometimes is a bit tedious, so may take one hour. I mean, immigration formalities and the customs uh, frisking or maybe three to five hours hold up if somebody had cigarettes on their charming person. That may be different, but Vilnius bus is the best option. The second trended topic is that goddamn visa recognition between Belarus and Russia, which is not working yet. I've sent a few queries to uh, the Russian embassy. They said, ask the FSB. I simultaneously sent a query to the FSB. There's no reply yet. I called the FSB border office at Smolensk. They said nothing is working because to enable this mutual uh, thing, two countries for one visa. The sh short story is if you have a Belarusian visa, you can go to Russia using Belarusian visa and the other way around. And the big question is, could the residency holders here with multiple visas do the same? Because that would open them up Russia and Russian transit uh, flights to almost worldwide, let's say. So that's a big deal. After Smolensk office, I also checked with the Sheremetyevo airport and they said, guys, what law? Mutual recognition of visas? That was FSB border control in Sheremetyo, which deals with uh, a lot of uh, international flights today, so they are not really out of the context. And the Damadyadova guy was very polite and he courteously told me that, yeah, there is such a law, it works and it's kind of operational, so welcome to Russia, so to speak. If you take a trip to Russia overland on a Belarusian visa or maybe even fly to Russia successfully, please share your experience in the comments. It will be very interesting to see how it ended up. Just to complete and conclude our usual section about travel, travel to Belarus isn't limited anyhow politically from within Belarus. I mean, Western visa-free mode is open and if you are uh, going to visit just specifically Western parts of Belarus, Grodno or Brest, you may contact a provider and they would get you a paper that will allow you some 15 days visa-free, it's absolutely on. Belarus is open the way it can be open in the given circumstances. Visa-free works for the airport uh, landings, except uh, flights aren't super cheap, of course, but the layovers are Georgia, uh, United Arab Emirates, if I'm not mistaken, then Istanbul, the main hub. And of course, to use uh, Moscow airports, one would need a Russian transit visa at least. Russian-Belarusian visa deal doesn't work. There is a separate video on that account. Speaking of travel limitations, of course, the Western websites uh, warn one about the complicated geopolitical situation. The goddamn war is still ongoing and um, everybody is speaking about the war these days. I mean, declare their position. You know my position. I'm a businessman, a capitalist. The war isn't helping the business unless one is selling guns and uh, 
other accessories. So while the war is still going, uh, Charm Place, Belarus is uh, described as a very horrible, dangerous place which one should leave immediately. Alerts were uh, published by the embassies of Canada, US, wherever they are located nearby urging their citizens to leave Belarus. By now, I guess, the only citizens of Belarus or Canada sticking in Belarus would be the guys very much not wanting to be back in Canada or the United States for a million other private reasons. So that's how it works. As a local, I would say the, the whole place is in one piece and it doesn't seem like there'll be a second wave of invasion launched from Belarus. So I would say that the Ukrainian conflict is slow burning, but it's the way it is. If you badly wish to visit Belarus, there is no obstacle. And for instance, if you're not eligible for visa free or if the flights are too expensive, you can get a visa and come overland. And bus, bus from Vilnius is a much easier and faster solution than bu the, the bus from Warsaw. Last but not least, and soon I'll release my tips and tricks for 2023 travel to Belarus, ATMs here may be a little bit off uh, serving uh, money to your card, a foreign card, non-Belarusian card, and uh, having some cash to back up your daily expenses would be a really reasonable way to go. Uh, by the way, currently there's an American guy in town. He's renting his flat for the first month. He has a 90-day visa. We are planning to do some business together and he is fine with how the internet works and how the whole place looks like. And he's just not fine with a uh, bus from Warsaw. So his next choice will be bus from Vilnius or maybe a flight. Many of you who follow the channel are aware of our country's economy being kind of dependent on currencies and everyday man's daily economy kind of depends on currencies. You get car parts uh, for dollars, you get car service for dollars, of course, if we're not talking in the official dealership. And uh, it's uh, always a rhetoric question whether official dealership fixes your car better than uh, the second-hand option. I very much am into the second-hand options, but you know I'm a poor So I'm low budget and I'm Second-hand oriented maybe through the rest of my miserable life. So that's how it goes I just have a story on hand of a guy buying a 2021 vehicle importing clearing blah 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 something is off the dealership is supplying his parts within a few months so it's not uh, it's not the handiest dealer's service although it's officially on warranty blah 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 but it's not helping so exchange rates are going up and for those buying a car or a property here that means they have to uh, basically they have a, a bit of a negotiation edge advantage over those uh, who have rubles although most of the buyers don't have rubles here if you have been tracking my videos and i would say that statistically february properties have been selling well and the cars there are very few reasonable options on uh, the market uh, the um, the shopping continues and uh, quite soon i may be sh shopping again for a one-room apartment for another uh, gentleman looking to get residency so i'll be releasing a few pictures and a few videos about how the analytics currently looks like A surprising thing for many Belarusians, my business nowadays is relocating Westerners to the Republic of Belarus for temporary-permanent residency. So it uh, gives ground to many questions like what the hell, how could you move, how could you leave all those Western uh, liberties behind. But then somebody's freedom starts somewhere where the other man's freedom ends. Nowadays, there isn't even the word man, I guess, there's person. And uh, we are a conservative society. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about this. A few things I would like to ask you guys about. Uh, Facebook and a few other major producers are they off laying off thousands of workers. I'm not sure how they get their contract cancellation notice, but thousands of people, according to the Western media, are being uh, removed from their workspaces because of the shrinking markets and ongoing crisis or something like this. 
So here in Belarus, uh, there are no massive job cuts. The uh, people are uh, just uh, getting their contracts cancelled. Was it two months ahead of their extension? Normally, people who can't get extension know about this. It's not ideal, of course. There's state employment. There's capitalist employment here in the country, mostly state employment, by the way. And uh, speaking of that, what do you think, guys? Uh, is uh, it more democratic to hire and fire people the way they do it in the West? Of course, you would know clearly how it's done in the East, but in the East, uh, people normally have uh, uh, in the state employee, the way I stereotypically see it, it may be different, have uh, one education, have one, uh, let's say, diploma, one major, and they're trying to stick to it. And uh, I would say they are unlikely to be upgrading their skills. And they are kind of badly dependent on the employer's moves. And uh, they are not really fond of the idea of canceling their contract, which creates a certain degree of loyalty, if you understand what I mean. Unemployment in Belarus is officially 0.5, less than 0.5%. It's uh, measured in a very peculiar way. Uh, those who don't have a job have to show up at the local labor exchange and get $20 a month in return for some odd jobs and for some bunch of vacancies that will be thrown their way after they apply and submit their papers and uh, present their background skills for this official database. So obviously 20 bucks a month is not a skyrocketing amount of money to go on uh, with and most of the reasonable unemployed folks are not with the labor exchange of Belarus. In light of this, my question is, guys, with what is more fair, social, uh, socialist perhaps uh, employ kind of employment like this with uh, factories getting to tons of loan money and those loans are then signed off by and by. Ooh, every now and then when the factory fails to pay it off to the state, the thousands of employed uh, workers cheerfully go to work, and then go home and take their bank loans to get their TV sets, carpets, fridges, whatever shit, and maybe have a sunny holiday once a year. Is it a better employment mode when somebody's sticking in their profession because like, oh, where else do I have to go? You can often hear that from the cops. Or the capitalist employment is somewhat better and the capitalist subsistence system allowance when one is unemployed is better. Tell me what you think. That would be an interesting thing to read in the comments. Another thing you may be uh, sharing your uh, opinion about is uh, censorship, which equally exists in uh, the Western media, on YouTube and elsewhere. It seems like every now and then Twitter and Facebook, on top of other social networks, there's loads of them, uh, go through some kind of a scandal about hushing down some facts and getting some fact checkers who are not really fact checkers and that kind of stuff. So a lot of uh, things, posts, uh, basically gets chopped or gets downrated so that other people wouldn't see them easily. While here in, uh, let's say, ex-socialist bloc, Soviet bloc, let's say in Russia, a lot of NGOs, a lot of uh, media channels, private, independent, whatever they call themselves, get shut down and pushed away from the screen so as to not spread any alien, you know, enemy collaborating kind of views. What do you think is better? The Western kind of censorship and I trust it that if I start telling you about our way of life, about our values, including family values, if you know what I mean, my channel will not last long on YouTube. So is that better or is some uh, state bureaucrat is a better opportunity to get the freedom of speech, uh, freedom exercised justly, adequately. What do you think? Put the comments down below. Economy-wise, we still seem to be holding and some of the uh, sanctioned items like those German chocolates are actually finding way into Belarus. On top of other ingredients and spare parts and including the car parts, because uh, I have a little 2014 Audi, which needs a replacement here and there once in a while. The Western stuff is coming in. The price and supply uh, chains uh, have uh, become less pleasant, let's say. Otherwise, uh, we're still holding, pretty much. It seems the second reactor of our nuclear plant that has just been commissioned, uh, maybe a 
more than one year ago, is about to be launched in October 2023, is about to be commissioned, I guess is the term. And it's kind of interesting that although Belarusians are not very happy with Chernobyl aftermath and how the state back at that time handled the trouble, it's, it's there, it's a given fact, and the local media treat the criticism of the Baltic neighbors, because basically the news station is 80 kilometers away from Vilnius, but on the Belarusian side, in the north uh, western part of Belarus. The state paper called them the uh, Baltic dogs are trying to bark against the uh, atomic station. Whether or not it's a good asset to have as a source of uh, power, because uh, first reactor took uh, six or seven efforts to get it kick-started. That's how the impression I got from the media. Every now and then they shut it down for maintenance works, for some kind of uh, thing, which to a normal manner kind of strange. If you plug it in, you plug it in, you get some juice out and then count the cash and actually pay some cash off to the Russian sponsors of that thing. What do you think? Is it good or bad to have our own atomic station in our rather uncertain times? Let's try and be a little bit positive. The uh, winter is over, spring weather is setting in, it's kind of lovely, sunny, weather is a little bit on the colder side and uh, you don't want to walk without gloves in the morning because you can feel it, although it's just minus one, that the humidity uh, makes you feel it like minus five or minus seven or whatever. So the weather is brightening up and I might brighten up along with it because I like spring and all this revival. Uh, this may not be something that the southern people in Belarus may enjoy because Pripyat, uh, the place by Ukraine, a huge river with a lot of uh, uh, tributaries, was it the term, uh, is uh, going up. Uh, level of the water is going up. There will be floods. There were already floods reported in major cities like Brest and somebody's reddish vegetable bed may be just washed away by the river. Once in five years such thing occurs. It's kind of good for agrarians because they have plenty of um, precipitation in the fields, but generally the one whose vegetable bed gets washed away, or garage for that matter, are not very happy. So this is something that happens and this is something happening this season. Whether or not April and May will see some dust storms, which occur in the south as well because of uh, unreasonable amelioration, is a, an open question. We'll see it when we cover April news, if I make it that long. Spring also brings the girls' day, as you may know from the previous releases, although I guess we didn't cover that. I was very much offline through February, waiting for some uh, breaking headlines, like smashing headlines, which luckily never came out. The 23rd of February has evolved into Boys' Day, technically speaking Men's Day, Defender's Day, Red Army Day from the past, and the 8th of March, uh, two weeks later, conveniently, is the girls day so if you have some uh, misses uh, waiting for you in belarus you can send a postcard or something some new generation ladies like modern-minded ladies would say brush it away for sexist feminist whatever blah 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 shit holiday but most of the girls are adequately receiving the inadequate bunches of flowers tulips on top of other things that's the tulip day and many Dutch businessmen are now crying tears because their shit can't make it through the border because the sanctions and everything, borders are too tight, customs guys are too tight, if you understand what I mean. So the major point is this holiday is uh, tomorrow, basically, and uh, we are uh, making a big deal out of it because girls are our biggest asset, bigger than the atomic plant. Speaking of girls, uh, the uh, motherhood, the uh, childbirth is giving a lot of attention in Belarus. And in the past, I used to tell my tourists that Belarus has very uh, low uh, infant death mortality, if the term is right. So they have those babies coming out and take care of them and revive them if necessary. So this doesn't make uh, a problem in, in the modern Belarus. If a mother gets medical attention from before 12 weeks, she's entitled to a certain one-time bonus when the baby comes out. And the decree, the maternity leave is three years long. By the way, you might or might not share your point of view, whether or not mom 
degrades as a professional throughout this three year long uh, maternity leave. For the fathers, I think it's six months, but I may be wrong. You know, as a potential father, I didn't quite research the matter, but uh, the father's um, maternity leave exists. But in a rather conservative society, a father is unlikely to take uh, maternity leave because, you know, all the Father boys will be laughing at his ass, uh, his missus is, is breadwinner and he is sitting up down with a baby, which is not what a proper man should do. This is, this is the kind of values we share, although in larger cities, of course, more people kind of cooperate, more men cooperate with their women about uh, making the first months of a child comfortable. Uh, speaking of more social uh, news that are on, any impressive headlines, any impressive uh, events. There are just two little things uh, I could entertain you with. In Horodok district in the north, a piece of the roof of a farm dropped on whatever was down below, and down below there was a, some 50-year-old employee who was revived and given treatment and taken to hospital, and four cows who were not revived. That's a shame, but that's the uh, heritage of the Soviet collective farm system where uh, upgrading and maintenance isn't really given proper finance and attention. So that's just a daily life accident in the countryside. Not that the farms are collapsing daily, but in the north they're not particularly thriving either. The very last thing, some guy, a uh, security guy from a shopping center in Belarus, in Minsk, uh, was trying to approach some nightclub guys, just, you know, guys who are out on the street for a smoke, offering them weed, and more importantly, he was uh, pretending to be an American. I'm not sure about his phonetics or vocabulary or anything, but the cops grabbed him and his weed, and apparently he's about to get some uncomfortable years in prison. That's about it about the social agenda. I know this is a pretty light update, and I would rather keep them light than discuss some kind of, you know, horrible geopolitical shit. Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate the support of the patrons pretty much, although soon YouTube will uh, not be able to send me any money to Belarus. I'll have to go to BSB and ask where the hell my hard-earned cash is. I hope some of your pennies will reach me if you have five or ten dollars. Nothing more, but if you are generous, you know, 25 or 50 bucks will be really helpful to upgrade the metal and everything. I'll be happy if you support the cause. All your comments are welcome down below. If you are planning to travel, to move to Belarus, you're contemplating a consultancy, I'll be happy to help and hope to see you in Minsk someday. And the next bar meeting for the expats in the center of Minsk is announced down below. Thank you for watching and see you later.